Uh, today, uh, I'm sharing with you testing of our faithfulness. There are many revelations in the Bible told me we may not like it or even uh, uh, you are taught uh, to respect the word of God from the uh, first line until the last line of the entire Bible. But there will be moments you may not quite agree, uh, quite agree with certain statements in the Bible, but they are the truth of God. They are part of the truth of God. Yes. Yeah. I know, you know, at a certain stage of our walk with God, God may allow us to understand certain scripture. Uh, uh, but uh, we are not ready to yield to it. So today I want to share with you from the Word of God that it is written in the Bible, it's from the heart of God. He does test our faithfulness. But His testing of our faithfulness is different from, uh, let me illustrate it this way, like you know, young people in their 20s, uh, a boy interested in a girl, a girl interested in a boy as a developer for a short time of a year or two they want to see each other sincere or not so there's some kind of testing game now I'm not talking about that, God's not testing you that way He's all knowing about you His testing is giving you a chance to prove your faithfulness because it was something greater for you it is not testing you to judge you, it's testing you for greater stewardship. Every blessing that God has put upon our life, our natural life, some of the inborn strength, the inborn strength can be on the physical level or in the mental level or relationship level or imaginary level. All these are strength given to you that you need to bear responsibility for it and you will be rewarded for uh, managing them effectively to bless people, to bless the whole world. And that is God. Alright? I would say that even now, you need to, uh, people don't want to hear about that. They, this way saying it from the world. But all these things that God has put upon our life are from God. We are stewards. We are accountable to Him. I want to say further, God even said He's going to reward what you do. Alright, I add a verse that I didn't put in my outline. You go to the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 23. And whatever you do, do it heartily, wholeheartedly. Do it from your heart, not do it to show you know, to your boss that you didn't uh, break the law uh, of the company or of the workplace, uh, you deserve your pay or deserve your increment. Now you do it as to the Lord and not to man. Now this doing to the Lord, not to man, is not said in a defiant way. Uh, you see, my God is higher than my boss. I do it to show my God. And then you despise your boss. No, not that way. You just do your work. Uh, you do it responsibly, uh, responsibly uh, to towards uh, your boss, your people. Because God is also watching not just your boss. Uh, your boss may be watching you to see whether you still deserve the pay and the increment, but God is looking at you even, He has a much more further uh, uh, view. It, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord. Some people are like me, called into uh, serving the Lord in a ministry, in using the spiritual gift and put upon my life. Uh, but not all Christians, in fact, I think most Christians are not called to take a ministry as a career. Yes. All right. Uh, and uh, the word of God says that, you know, whatever work you are, whether in the spiritual ministry or in uh, a profession or in a business, you bear in mind that God is your boss. You are accountable to Him 
and he will reward you. So I want to show you today in this message one specific area. He does watch your faithfulness. Yeah. Uh, you definitely remember what Jesus had taught. The more you give, the more you will receive. Yes, if you are faithful in a little, more will be given. All that God has placed upon our life, our talent, our wisdom, our opportunity are for us to bless people. Yeah. So if you want to depend on God, uh, to bear much fruit, to have success and prosperity from Him, you, you must not uh, just aim at yourself and your family. Yeah. In, in the words I think most most people they have put in their life and their family in view. That is a worker's mind. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you need to think further than yourself and your family. Yes, your family can say, you know, oh, yeah, our income is lower, so we don't eat out so often, uh, we don't uh, always buy new things. It's okay you know, to use some things already out of fashion, but uh, your workers don't think that way. They can always uh, resign and go to another place for some better benefits. So in fact, it's more humble, you know, it's humbler to be a boss. Yes. There'll be time you can see uh, even uh, your workers, they can afford things uh, that you try to save, you could spend. The world's very real. Thank God in my life, I taught an opportunity just two or three times, uh, something like that. Talk with people who are very rich, and uh, they themselves asked me to, how to pray for them because they were going through a very difficult time. Sometimes could be a worldwide recession. Some, some of them could be just, you know, they didn't know why. Some because they made a certain mistake. Uh, they miscalculated in a certain way, so they suffer for it. So during the suffering, they know that they need God. So quite conveniently, you know, uh, some would just uh, go to their pastors, spiritual leaders, speakers, and say, pray for me. But I want to tell you, even if I pray for you for a situation like that, God tell me that yes, he has heard the prayer, but the person may not succeed because they continue to, uh, to remain in their ignorance, in their mistake, or they make more mistakes. Okay? So don't, don't easily assume when you ask somebody to pray for you, you will surely be blessed. Now, that, that kind of uh, approach is not good because if you know, the person who prayed for you said, I heard from the Lord, Yes, you know, uh, you, you will overcome it. But if you don't overcome it correctly, then you will blame it. Pastor, you see, uh, you are a false prophet. You say, you know, from God that I, I will succeed, but I still fail. Uh, I'm not uh, talking negatively. The people misunderstand. I'm just talking honestly. This is what I discover as an itinerant preacher. Yeah, so I want to share with you from the Bible and from my personal experience and a few opportunities to pray for people who are in, in financial disaster. And somehow, you know, there was a miraculous intervention of the Lord and success came again. All right? Bible is not for you uh, to pick certain uh, truth, favor it, and deliberately don't want to listen to other truth in the Bible. You, you can never, you can never. So you want to succeed, you want revival, I want to tell you, you don't just assume that certain things that you just choose to believe will succeed, will give you prosperity, and also in ministry you will have revival. Yeah. You need to take care of other parts of the Bible that maybe God has spoken but you don't like to hear. Uh, so th this is the, the, the introduction. Uh, I am not, uh, not good in expressing uh, in writing. I have all these talks. <laughs> Just like my, my outline, the introduction is only one line, but it tells the whole truth. Uh, God may test our faithfulness before promoting us to manage bigger blessings. Okay? He doesn't test you just to punish you. 
that is a uh, that is a wrong preaching. That is not the whole thing about God. God does judge, but He's not a, a fault finder interested just to find fault with you and punish you and give you some hard time. No. All right. Get out of that old-fashioned belief if you were trapped there for many years. But three points to that. First one is God may permit adversity to test our faith on Him. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't test you with jealousy. He tests you with the purpose of promoting you. He tests you to promote you. Okay. Today I want to share from uh, the life of King Hezekiah. Uh, there is a verse in 2 Chronicles 32, verse 1, that caught my attention for many years. After these deeds of faithfulness, you know, so I, 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 I didn't like the rest of the statement because uh, I don't know about you, but for me, I wish that, you know, it would be another great thing mentioned that, though. No. It was a bad happening. Okay, this uh, Sennacherib, Sennacherib, I hope I pronounced it correctly, King of the Assyria, of the north, uh, north of uh, uh, Israel, came and entered Judah. He encamped against the fortified cities. That means they came so already in the, the, the in the land of Israel. They came until the city wall to block it. That means that there was, was no trading, no going out of the city to trade, and then no more uh, importing of uh, product or grain. Or anything from outside of that world. Yeah, thinking to win them over to himself. So this enemy didn't come to be friend. To win over means uh, he, he, he wants uh, this uh, Israel to be subjected under his rule. He wants to enslave Israel. Uh, so this statement caught my attention. I wanted to find out more. Well, over the years, it, uh, it, 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 some of the true vibe took me some years to connect them together with the big, big story. So from uh, chapter 28 of Second Chronicles, verse, verses 2 to 4, then 24 to 25, these are the things I could find about Hezekiah's father. His father was the worst king of Israel, as far as we call that the Bible. Yeah. Ahaz. Now, there was another name, sound a little bit different called Ahab. Ahab was bad. He allowed idolatry because he married a wife who was a uh, witchcraft uh, uh, believer. Not just a believer, a practitioner of witchcraft. Jezebel was a witch doctor, a witchcraft practitioner. So Ahaz was an even worse. How? He, sh he has shut the temple. Uh -uh. Means he didn't allow Israel to use the temple. Make metal, metal idols for worshipping Baal. Baal was a very uh, evil kind of idolatry in ancient Israel time. The neighboring nation uh, worship Baal, and uh, you just do some uh, finding out, uh, surfing, finding out from uh, uh, let's say like Wikipedia, then you will know, you will know how wicked was that worship, uh, worshiping of uh, Baal. Then burn incense in the valley of Ben Hinnom. Now the valley of Ben Hinnom was a place of uh, uh, burning dead bodies. Uh, so it, it was also a place uh, that some is uh, uh, worship of demons practiced there. And he made his children pass through fire. Means he offered his children 
uh, to the fire god is a child offering. Now Hezekiah was an eldest son, so he kept him alive to succeed the throne. Poor Hezekiah, as he was growing up, he has been watching the father send many of his younger brothers or sisters uh, to, to, to be sacrificed uh, to the fire god. He also offers sacrifices under every green tree. I believe the Bible contains no mistake. Uh, and even though Israel is a, a very dry area, almost can say uh, like it is a semi arid desert. Yeah. There are not so many trees uh, in Malaysia, but there are enough trees <laughs> uh, in, in the area. Uh, so imagine that uh, he offers sacrifices under every green tree, make altars and put them, and make altars for the demons, to put them on every street corner in Jerusalem. Oh, there are many street corners in Jerusalem. Jerusalem didn't increase. It's the same place. I mean the ancient Jerusalem. It's not a very big place can be like one housing estate uh, of uh, average size. But there are many, 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 many street corners. <laughs> so that was how wicked uh, King Ahaz. He was supposed to continue with the covenant of Abraham. He was supposed to continue with the teaching of Moses. Training all his people to worship Jehovah to honor God and have no other God. Yeah, the temple was a place to offer sacrifices for the forgiveness of all their sins. And he stopped it. Yeah. In fact, when the enemies came, he broke into pieces the things from the temple of God because almost all the things in the temple of God were well, covered with gold. You broke them into pieces in order to uh, give this gold to the enemies who demanded it. And what happened? He closed the doors of the temple to prohibit worship. So worship of Jehovah in Ahab's time had become illegal. In Ahab's time, the, 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 the king and the queen brought in Baal uh, worship brought in this terrible uh, form of uh, idolatry, but he didn't stop uh, the worshiping of Jehovah. Ahaz was a worship. You, you just see that the grace of God to preserve Israel for us when we are born again, we are in a spiritual. Israel in the family of uh, Abraham there is this preservation grace of God that's how for Christian no matter how bad uh, we fail you still find Bible verses say that you know uh, God will not allow us to cast hate long because we have received the blood of Jesus Christ that have made us righteous so the righteous fall but they will not be cast in long. Uh -uh. That means you will not uh, fail utterly and then God doesn't care for you. Uh, uh, an older term is called the remnant, uh, the remnant uh, grace of God. Yeah, God told Israel around Hezekiah's time or later because uh, uh, for many generations since uh, uh, King David, Israel have backslided again and again, and their backsliding each round is severer than the earlier. But when they return to the Lord, each round of the revival was also bigger than the earlier revival. Well, if people see that you know, God's grace uh, is overflowing, is fine. But is there a limit to God's patience? 
Yeah. You look at the Bible, both Old and Testament, just, uh, just say that you will, sh- you will read what you saw. Uh, people may think that, oh, there's an Old Testament teaching, New Testament only talking about grace. In both Old and New Testament, God is a same God, is a God of love all the while. Please do not think uh, that in the Old Testament time, He was a God of the law, He was an angry God, and in the New Testament, He is a smiling God and He doesn't punish. I tell you, you are wrong in your observation. All right. In the New Testament, in Galatians, it does say that whatever you sow, you will reap. If you sow in the flesh, you will reap corruption. Yeah? But don't be self righteous, don't always use some description that talk about even the New Testament, God is watching and He can punish uh, to judge people until you don't judge yourself. That is self righteousness. I tell you, that is the key why some Christians don't prosper, even though they are very intelligent. Because you didn't have a gracious heart. And you look into the Old Testament, uh, people like, uh, like, like, uh, like uh, Joseph, even Jacob later on, after his name was changed to Israel, David, these were people that have put on a grace, gracious heart, the heart of God. The heart of God is a heart of grace. Amen? It's a heart of mercy. His mercy is new every morning. I, 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 I spoke many times. So can you just for a while open up your heart and receive the truth and don't debate with it? Because when you debate, you are not receiving. Receive this truth. God's heart is a heart of grace, His heart of mercy, His grace is new every morning. And adopt it as your attitude to look at people, especially people that disappoint you, fail you, and do things differently from you. Okay? And I believe if you have this new mind, that most of the time, let's say out of 10 persons who disappointed you, you can forgive nine of them, you can pray the kindest prayer for them, you will see, you start to succeed, you start to see your life easier. There may be more pressure, more testing, but it would be harder and harder. It would be easier and easier. I'm not giving a suggestion. This is a truth in the Bible. I took 70 years to learn. Okay? I'm old. Now, please do not think that at all. I, I'm saying it uh, like I'm showing a sign that I will die in a few years. No. Uh, I've learned uh, to respect the truth of God. Just say, because I've gone through cultures, culture in the world, culture in some churches that people tell you, do say that with this negative uh, teaching, negative talking. I am not talking about that. I'm talking about the truth. The truth does talk about the definition of sin, the definition of negativity, the definition of uh, uh, cruelty. They're all said in the Bible. Okay? So now uh, I have already shown you in point one that was Hezekiah's background. He didn't have a godly father. You see, he didn't have a godly father and had a father like Ahaz who populated a demonic, hellish teaching and practices are two different things. Yeah. So I think Ahaz is the only person in the Bible that fit into the word called wickedness. I know wickedness is a wide range, but it, this is really terrible. All right. Now then uh, Ahaz died, so Hezekiah was still young. Uh, I mean, uh, in the 20s, and he succeeded the throne. And thank God for the remnant grace, he got the God-fearing mother. Yeah, where else could he learn? Because the father has uh, 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 make it a law, no worshiping Jehovah. It's illegal to worship Jehovah. I think there were terrible persecution also uh, on those who are still faithful to Jehovah. Now, how could he worship God? 
I know he's a son of the king. I think uh, he must have learned this from his father. Because the name of the mother in, a, in ancient uh, Israel, it was a name in a priestly family. A girl's name in a priestly family. Alright? So as soon as uh, he succeeded the throne, the first thing he did was this. He invited all Israel and Judah, not just the southern kingdom, Judah, that was still fearing God, the ten, ten tribes of the north that had departed uh, from God. They had uh, worshipped a kind of mixture of, of uh, Jehovah and idolatry. Uh, they, they have their own holy city called Samaria. That means Israel, this word here, is talking about the ten tribes in the northern kingdom that backslided spiritually. And the uh, holy city was Samaria, so literally they were Samaritans. That's why by Jesus' time, after many, many generations in Jesus' time, the, 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 the Jews, means the people of Judah, the word Jews is different from the word Judah, the people of Judah, refused to walk through Samaria. You see, Jesus was, uh, in, in his reputation, the ministry, also in his uh, costume, uh, he was a teacher, a godly teacher. But he looked people know, oh, this is a godly teacher. But he walked through Samaria on purpose. He knew though there was a broken life, the woman by the well, at a time that no other would be there, so that no one would gossip about her, or query her, or despise her, or could be persecuting her, hitting her. So Jesus went there. So I want to show you that today, this teaching, it's about the heart of God. The heart of God is a heart of forgiveness, a heart of mercy, a heart of grace, a heart of restoration. So Jesus was a restorer, a savior. Uh, so now, he uh, invited even Israel, the Samaritans, to renew the covenant which God had made with their ancestor, Abraham. So God has uh, chosen Abraham and all his descendants that finally in Jesus' time the covenant had even included the whole world, included everyone who acknowledged Jesus is a savior and we are in the covenant. So uh, technically uh, uh, before Jesus' time, it's called the Old Covenant, and after Jesus had come, it's the New Covenant, it's the same covenant, a covenant of forgiveness and grace and restoration. Just like in the Old Covenant, God wanted them to bring a blood sacrifice to the uh, tabernacle and later on the worship. At the entrance there, they transfer their sin to the sacrifice. Yeah, they scapegoat their sin to the animal. Then they kill the animal and it is an act of faith of believing that sin that is punishable by, by death is with the animal, so they are spared. So it's an act of faith to believe that God has set that system, so they are forgiven. Alright, so when Jesus came, he became the Lamb of God who takes away the sin, not just from Israel, not just from the descendants of Abraham. He takes away the sin of the Chinese, of the Indians, of the Africans, everybody who is born after Adam and Eve. The Lamb of God is uh, universal. Alright, it's not racist. Yeah, it's international, it's not just the Western world. The Lamb of God is not just for the British, the Americans, uh, or any of these European uh, 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 race. It's for everybody. So the difference between Old Covenant and New Covenant is the coverage. The Old Covenant covers only Israel. The New Covenant covers the entire human race.
from Adam all the way until just before the second coming. Amen. So the two covenants, the difference is the size or coverage. Basically, it's from the heart of God. Both old and new covenant. There's a covenant of hope. And Jesus has become our hope of glory. Amen. Good. Now, with this whole understanding, uh, you, would, you would appreciate Hezekiah. He succeeded the throne of Ahab. And there was the grace of God for him, though he was just a young man. All right? I don't think so. He had gone for a war. And he didn't receive much uh, good uh, training from the father. Because everything the father knew was demonic, nothing else. So I think he learned from his mother. Fear the Lord. Jehovah, the I am who I am, is a creator. He's the one who has chosen Abraham and his descendants. He is the one who has given this land uh, called Promised Land. By the way, the Promised Land was one of the worst uh, places of idolatry in ancient time. It is a big misunderstanding thinking that God is cruel, wanted Israel to rise up just to kill them. No, don't look at it that way. It had all, that means the sin of the Canaanites and the many other tribes, you know, in Middle East, in the today, Israel and the surrounding, as far as to Iraq, you know, in the whole area, they practice witchcraft to the extent that they have already gone beyond uh, God's patience of judgment. Okay? So there are things only when we reach heaven, whether you are Christian or non-Christian who happen to be qualified to go to heaven, we don't debate here. Uh, by then we'll have full understanding why God promised Abraham and all his descendants to take over West Asia as the promised land. The promised land is very big. Now, uh, I want you to see this remnant grace of God is a truth in the Bible. So don't blame your home background, your background. I, I always uh, put it positively when I say this, that like, there must be some happening in your life uh, that can let you to become a Christian. Sometimes could be very, uh, some people, uh, their, their, their journey to come to know Jesus was very positive from a Christian grandparent, Christian parent, uh, churches that like, uh, have taught children the truth. Very good. I think most people do not have such a nice background to become Christians. Yes, most people don't have Christian parents. <laughs> most Christians have no, uh, even, I mean, most people have no Christian friends, like me. Yeah. You don't just look at, you know, your friends happen to be all Christian uh, and thinking that I say the wrong thing. You, 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 you go out and look at your own Christian friends. Most of them will not become Christian, have never heard of the gospel, will never hear again. So go and tell them the gospel. So this is a situation. You provide the grace. You provide the wisdom, the knowledge for them to come to know Christ. So, I appreciate the mother of uh, Hezekiah, the wife of a wicked uh, king. And she most likely was the only source where the revelation of Jehovah was passed on to the son. Okay? Now, when he had gathered all Israel and Judah to return to the covenant, open up the temple, clean it, and uh, installed the priests, the Levites, and they uh, uh, conducted a blood sacrifice again, a worship God, giving their tithes and offering. And the priests were teaching the law of the Old Testament again. What happened? The Lord prospered them. When you return to the Lord, you return to the source of blessing. Yeah. 
since uh, last Sunday, I already come into this in this area of the truth to show you. You need to return to the Lord again and again. Not that we are sin so terribly. We, we our mind, our soul, uh, it is not not uh, not like you know a uh, 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 giant computer. Uh, can control the whole traffic uh, of a whole nation like that no it's all within your control if you don't control it sadness will somehow come in jealousy can somehow come in yeah fear can come in so you need to keep on looking at jesus and draw the perfect love of god that casts out fear uh, and look at Jesus, uh, then you can find God's plan and you journey towards uh, God's plan for your life. If you don't, there will be all the offer of the devil to detour you from the plan of the Lord. Alright? Walking with the Lord is not just to prove to people that I'm growing, I'm growing. I don't, I don't say it that way anymore because I realize that, you know, that will give me a false notion, a false impression one day. I assume that I'm spiritually old enough. I'm spiritually mature enough. Then I can have a kind of attitude towards people, you know, you're still young. Uh, you are still growing. I was uh, growing up spiritually in that kind of environment that I realized that that is a lie. We are all born again and receive the gift of righteousness and the Holy Spirit is inside us and we allow His rivers of righteousness, rivers of life to flow out of us. So if we have that view when our fellow Christian uh, doesn't perform so well when they uh, allow the Holy Spirit to manifest the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, uh, all kinds of godly virtues to their life. We will not be disappointed because all of us uh, are not using our natural effort to prove to one another I'm better than you, I'm holier than you. No, we are all proving ourselves. We are yielding to the Holy Spirit to make us better and better. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, uh, after this deeds of faithfulness, third point, that is our key today. Uh, after this deeds of faithfulness of Hezekiah, restoring the worship of Jehovah in uh, Israel, God permitted the invasion of Assyria to. Why God allowed that? The attack of uh, Assyria attack was to test Hezekiah that he might know all that was in his heart. Now God is not like he got a suspicious spirit. He doesn't quite trust uh, people. Uh, keep on testing people. I tell you, don't do that. If, 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 you, if you think that is smart, I I'm old enough to tell you I watch lives. I find that people will always test their friends, test their boyfriend, girlfriend, their wife, their husband. They don't enjoy that. They get into trouble. People will know that you test me, means you don't trust me. Alright? It damages. Uh, business partner is the same. If you always suspect that your business partner is uh, doing against you, is trying to hide away some profit, you can never uh, succeed. Or you will just succeed to that level. If you are not in business in working, team working, I tell you it's a nature. You don't need to teach about it. You don't do farming alone uh, in, in, the, in, the, uh, I mean, in the farming area. The whole, uh, some of these are small, I mean, uh, less developed nation, less developed uh, uh, agriculture. There is not. Uh, like uh, in some of the big country, you know, they they have uh, the whole village organized together under the cooperative, the co-op uh, 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 style means everybody owns the whole agriculture. You will get your share. So that's how farmer can become super rich. But in the less developed nation, the whole family is a team involved in farming. Yeah. If they are in fishery, yeah, father, son, uh, 
or some daughters who are who, who dare to go and are to become uh, a fisherman, they will do fishing together. Yeah, business is the same like now hawkers. Now that's closer to home and you can realize. But most of the hawkers husband and YG. Children also maybe you know for a certain period of time in the gym. Especially now in these three years uh, during the pandemic, uh, you have to save your, uh, your, your money. So teamwork is uh, common sense. Okay, so they are all say in the Bible, read the book of Proverbs, you'll find many principles about working together. Yeah, so I, I, I want to tell you again that uh, God tested Hezekiah of his faithfulness not like we human beings test one another. God was testing him about how much he would want the blessing, more blessing from Jehovah. God tests you always that uh, is for bigger stewardship, not lesser, but bigger. That's why the Bible got this teaching, you got to forget about the old, the yesterdays. And then the new will come. Yeah, even though right before you, the Lord uh, give you a desert environment, but He promised God can cut a river in the desert. He can raise a highway, super highway on the wilderness. Okay, get use of the mind of God. Uh, look at the Old Testament. That, that is how God looked at Hezekiah when he tested him. He find that, yeah, Hezekiah is so young. He started very well. Uh, he opened up the temple again. He restored worship. It's revival. But that is stage one revival, phase one of revival. He tested his uh, faithfulness. If he could trust God and not go to seek Egypt's help or uh, another nation's help uh, to fight against Assyria, then God will say that, yes, I will bless you some more. So that means the rest of the story is very positive one point two. God can allow adversity to fortify your faith on Him. Yeah. Okay, let me quote uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. That means if you feel that all oh, yeah, God is so unfair to you, you are tested beyond your ability and just your feeling. That's just how you feel. Now, what do you call, I mean, uh, call that feeling? That's what's self-pity. Yeah? Anyone can fall into self-pity. Sometimes we can disguise the self-pity. Uh, we can even talk it uh, when people actually know that you, know, you feel very painful, come and uh, cover you. Ah, yeah, come on, save your time. La. I'm okay, I'm okay. La. Let's go and eat. Ah, but look at the face, it's really terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, rationalizing uh, is a self defense. Okay? Uh, so, God said, no temptation has overtaken you, except such, is, such as is common to man. But God is faithful. So when you are facing temptation, and uh, you look at God, God is faithful. Now, I need to add this point so that you don't misunderstand me. Uh, I didn't, uh, uh, in this message, say, I don't know about the next message, I will not. In, a, in chapter 1 of the book of James, it, it is uh, uh, it's the same thing, same truth that James was uh, talking about. The Holy Spirit was speaking through James. Uh, uh, some verses, the word temptation, and then some verses, the word uh, testing. It, it, it's that. So, these temptation and testing are using uh, the expression, say, the different side of the same coin. The devil sent a temptation when God allowed sin. God's side is 
testing your faithfulness. Satan set that problem, wanted you to fail. God allowed it to happen, wanted to provoke you. So there are not two things as the same thing. Now you look at Job, uh, look at Job. Uh, Job is uh, the earliest book in the whole Testament, Old Testament. A very old, 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 old Job. So, uh, God said you know, in chapter 1 of Job, uh, that Job is faithful. Who challenged uh, God? It was, it was Satan came and challenged God. You know? I want to tell you, uh, Job is not good. But God said, I see that he's good, he's righteous. And the devil like to insist, uh, I want to uh, give him problem. And God said, I know the heart of uh, Job. Yeah, I allow you, but you have no right to kill him. Uh, so put that into the first Corinthians 10, 13. That means before God permitted uh, uh, temptation to come your way, he still looked at that as an opportunity to promote you. He looked at you po positively. He has pre-assessed you, he has assessed you. He has done a, 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 a search, an uh, evaluation of that. Yes, you can go through it. You will come forth stronger. Yeah, so he knew that uh, Job would fail. Uh, the, 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 the testing Job would come forth stronger. But God is faithful, will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. God is watching even when you go through the worst time, you think you are God, you are God, nobody care, no more future, say la, mati la. But God is watching, He knows that He will not allow the devil to do further. He didn't allow the devil to kill Job. Yeah, God knows best. Amen. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape. Even when God had allowed the temptation, He got a way out for you. Yes, there will be help. There will be counsel. There will be gracious encouragement. There will be new opportunity. Yeah, it's a closed door. But then there will be a new door. <laughs> Amen. When you miss an opportunity, I want to tell you when God permitted it because there is a better door. Yeah. I just feel that there is a better client, there is a better opening, there is a better business, better deal. And yes. And if you are in the business, because of, I was an itinerant, uh, I wasn't God, I'm just a preacher. Have I disappointed churches that invited me? Yes, many times. But God was faithful. He opened another door that had no idea that church exists. <laughs> ah, God, when He opens a door, He will not close it. It does not mean the same door. Uh, it's an itinerant ministry door. If that door closes, there are plenty of other open doors. I think the business is the same. Yeah, there were also people, though God told me, go and uh, pray for their healing, but they didn't want. Have I felt disappointed before? I was shocked more than disappointed. But then after that, God no, gave so, so many healings, so many people uh, came to me, I prayed for them, they were healed, they were healed, they were healed. God always will test, do you still want to believe that He is Jehovah, He is the Creator? He is the provider. He is the sustainer. He is the one who opens a door and no one can close. You want to believe that? You will find that in your walk with the Lord. Uh, people talk about maturity. I tell you, don't be so self-confident. Alright? Yeah. In the Old Testament, uh, when... Uh, when uh, Moses was very old, he knew that he cannot enter the Promised Land. And then he repeated the law that God spoke to Israel. That's one thing he said. You know, don't think that it is your ability to make you well. That's why you find this statement in the Bible. Uh, 
But well comes from, uh, it's God who gives the power to get wealth, right? Uh, for what is for the establishing of the covenant? It is in that words, no, I think either before or after God told through Moses, don't think that, don't, don't be so proud one day, you brag about it, say that it's your ability that can become uh, successful and wealthy. I believe there's a truth for the New Testament believer, like you and me. We must know after God has blessed us, we continue to look at God, look at Jesus. Our second success should be bigger than the first success because this is a generous God. It's an overflowing blessing, overflowing grace. Amen? Amen. Develop this in your mind so that you will not uh, 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 dwell in fear, dare not try, always had a testimony. And over 25 years ago, I succeeded once. Yeah, your second success is still waiting for you. And don't draw the conclusion, some success, huh? you have to wait a long time. No, you miss the success. But it's still before you walk through the, the second door, please. Now, when you have this mind, huh, I also want to tell some of you, you will, you, you will look strange before even other Christians. Yes. Yeah, people are so used to the lesser truth, uh, the lesser way of preaching. Once talking about that, some people may immediately feel uncomfortable. Be honest with yourself, be honest with the truth. So God uh, will make the way out that you may be able to bear it too. Even when you go through temptation and testing, don't be too self-confident, your confidence on Jesus. Look unto Jesus, the beginner and the finisher of your faith. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, now, I also want to bring up uh, Paul. It is uh, uh, testing. Uh, so in the second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 and verse 9, it's mentioning this. He said it, a thorn in the flesh, which was a messenger of Satan. So this thorn in the flesh is an annoying thing. You see, some disease kill, but a thorn in the flesh, it's just an irritation. It doesn't kill you. All right. Just like toothache doesn't kill, but it's terrible. Uh, or allergy, some slight allergy. Uh, so you, you you eat a little bit too much uh, nuts. Uh, oh, 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 it doesn't kill, but it's very very uh, irritating. It's an annoyance. Uh, so this thought in the flesh. Uh, is a demon, a messenger of Satan, manifested. It's the first, first time in my outline uh, I put that even demon manifests. Not just angel manifest, Holy Spirit manifest, demon can manifest. This demon called a uh, thorn in the flesh manifested to buffet Paul. Means it happened many rounds. To buffet means to hit uh, again and again and again and again. Yeah. Lest, what is the purpose? Unless it should be exalted a good measure to minister with the abundance of revelations from God. One of Paul's spiritual gifts was to see the heart of God and, and understand that it's a true or just directly hear from God, not a teaching. And he wrote down uh, as a letter for some of these churches that he founded. And then later on, you know, some of the ancient church leaders, they gather this letter and become uh, part of our New Testament. They are called the epistle. Uh, if you think, uh, what is an epistle? Some uh, funny jokes say that it's a wife of an apostle. <laughs> you know, epistle is just an old English word uh, called letter. Communication letter. Okay? Email, uh, email. Uh, 
So this is a truth. This is a truth. The, the, the devil got some demons called a thorn in the flesh. That describes the nature of the kind of demon. It, it doesn't make you fall immediately. It doesn't make you dead immediately. But if you don't take care, you may fall. If you don't take care, uh, you may die. Okay? The, the, the purpose of this uh, a thorn in the flesh kind of demon to, 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 to keep on troubling you is to stop you from receiving uh, certain spiritual gift, certain uh, thing from God. Yes. Over here, I have uh, brought up this truth. That Christian, you will realize that when God has said there is an open door, there is a journey you walk through it, Please don't naively assume that it is trouble-free. The Bible never promised. But the Bible does have truth, uh, like today's message. The devil watch it, and he is the king of jealousy. He doesn't want anyone, anyone who is born again in Jesus Christ to succeed. How come he knows? Because he was formerly a chief angel, he has the ability to know things. He is not all knowing like God, but he definitely has a mind, uh, has an ability to see things better than we who are now trapped in the body. There are things that angels can see we can't see. There are things that demons can see you can't see, but you don't need to fear. See yourself as ruling together with Jesus, and in the name of Jesus, you can bind and stop anything. Uh, a thought in the flesh kind of demons. Amen? So, uh, God didn't, uh, yeah, he, or rather Paul, he said, God, please remove this demon. Please help. Like God say, help yourself. God say, no, my grace upon you is enough, is more than enough. My grace is sufficient for you and my strength is made perfect in weakness. When you feel uh, so terrible, uh, when you're feeling so terrible, demons uh, are there causing uh, uh, troubles, annoyance, hindrances, gossip, criticism. Uh, oh, you don't need to feel this, this harder. You just keep looking at Jesus. Yeah. So Paul, from his experience, he learned something. He rather became confident. If there's infirmity, he stopped the infirmity and received healing. Yes. We can overcome anything that the devil said by stopping it in Jesus' name. Amen. Because whatever you have bound, remain bound. That's what Jesus has promised uh, us personally. When we believe in Him, we have this authority. We can bind, we can release in the spiritual realm. Things from the realm of darkness, when we stop it, it is stopped. Things from the realm of glory, like healing, restoration, anointing, revival. When they're spoken, you'll become a real experience for ourselves and for people. Now we put together with what we started the uh, uh, first point. When Hezekiah cried out to God, the Assyrians uh, uh, was a very strong neighbor of ancient Israel. They came. So, Hezekiah and his people were all locked up inside uh, the city wall. I mean, inside the city. The city wall was uh, locked. So it's just a matter of time. Food will be consumed. Water will be consumed. It's a time people will just die. It has come to that time. So Hezekiah cried out to God with Isaiah. So that means many chapters of the book of Hezekiah of uh, Isaiah were talking about Hezekiah's time. Isaiah was a prophet at some of the worst time of Israel. Okay? 
Isaiah was at the time of Ahaz, was at the time of a, a, back, a very bad start very bad backsliding of ancient Israel. So when Hezekiah pray and cry out to God together with Isaiah for a divine intervention, God just sent one mighty angel. You see, God is so powerful. God has many types of angels. Some angels are so powerful, just one. He does not need to send an entire army of, uh, of heaven. He just sent one mighty angel. This mighty angel defeated the entire 185,000 of the Assyrian army. Ooh. Today, God still have many angels and their angels are that powerful. I believe some of these angels, they have special talents and ability. I am sure you can ask God to send angels into your job, into your business, into your family. Family sure the Bible said the angels encamp around you. Please do not think uh, that they just encamp around you as a uh, as bodyguard outside of your gate. That's it. I think many of them they are watching your health, watching uh, your heartbeat, your cholesterol level. Oh yes, I think angels are at your service. If you have little children, they have difficulty with mathematics. I just tell God send some angels that are good in mathematics to help my grandchildren. Why not? There is not a lousy prayer. I think there's a good suggestion. I just say amen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you travel, you believe angels. Yes, you took your travel far away. Uh, even in this city, just a few days ago, I saw an accident. And I thank God oh, there was just a thought uh, before. Because I, I went out the time it didn't happen. When I came back, uh, then it happened, there was a traffic jam. Uh, you, you see, some people, they are in a hurry. When there's traffic jam, uh, <coughs> they get angry. I think maybe two out of ten, <laughs> uh, we get angry. It depends on if you have a very urgent uh, assignment happen like that. So because uh, I, 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 I saw how far away it's time to slow down. It could be an accident at all. It turned out to be this, but I have some impatient cars uh, around me, behind me. Uh, wonder why I slow down all. Uh, so, you know, like in Malaysia, when you wonder why people slow down, <laughs> uh, I'm not talking good about myself. I just say good about God that God did give the talk to slow down. And very quickly, within uh, uh, maybe less than 20 seconds, I was there already. So I knew that it must be something serious because I saw the police car, the blue light was uh, shining. Uh, then ambulance sound. So just cross over me. It took a long while. Uh, because I just opened up just one day for three lanes traffic. There's already a uh, queue up to pass through. A test of patience. Well, I want to tell you that God protects you, His angels protect you even every day when you go out, when you come in to your house. Then this is what the Bible says your angels that protecting your going out and your coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, so after this, uh, uh, Hezekiah and Isaiah cry out to God, and God uh, gave uh, heavenly intervention. What happened? Israel prospered during the reign of Hezekiah. So you put point one and point two together, you see the same truth. When God permits a testing, He has in view of your next success. Amen. When he permit this prolonged testing all over the world these three years because it was something better for this world. But the world need to change. Recognizing that the world, the entire world, it has a time that God is going to change it. So flow with the time of God. There is a psalm, I think 120 something, but the psalm say that uh, 
uh, you build where God is building, otherwise uh, your work is in vain. Yeah. So now, uh, there's time to watch, you know, where God is opening up door. So you have to see what are the new ways, new things of God. So walk through new door, going on with the new ways of the Lord. Amen. Point three, God will manifest His glory to protect and vindicate us. I'll read to you First Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to verse 14. Beloved, do not think, uh, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Now, so those are good favor to hear all you know, the teaching about trial, testing. Look, this is what uh, Apostle Peter said. Don't think it is strange concerning fiery trial. As though some strange thing happened to you. Then how to face it? Now, this is what the Holy Spirit said through Apostle Peter. But rejoice in the Lord. Not just rejoice a little. Rejoice without any limit. Uh, rejoice to flow with the joy of the Lord. That is what the Paul has been saying. Rejoice always. You put it together what Peter said. That when you are going through fiery trial, until you feel that you cannot bear it, don't go into sadness, don't go into fear, but keep on doing soaking in the Spirit, drinking in the wine of the Holy Spirit, until you have received the heavenly joy. The heavenly ecstatic joy. You can even make it a practice to get drunk in the spirit at least once a week. If you can't do it at your home, if you do it at your home, uh, your husband, your wife may laugh at you, your children, your grandchildren may laugh at you, you come to church. Amen. If you can do it at home, uh, it will be even better. Yeah, so rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. Now Christ's suffering was not a defeat. Christ's suffering was to set us free. Amen. So when you rejoice with this ecstasy from heaven, you are partaking of what Jesus had defeated when he died. Yes, and defeated all the sickness, all the sickness, all the sin, all the curses. That when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Now, this glory to be revealed is talking about uh, God uh, take you out of the shame, out of the pain, out of the suffering, out of the testing, out of the trial, out of the temptation. Yeah. With exceeding joy. So the joy of the Holy Spirit happened here for 11 years already. Right? 11 years. Keep it. Receive it. Go and uh, teach the whole body of Christ about it. So I believe now God has given us a gift called breakthrough gift. This is a breakthrough with exceeding joy from heaven. All right, I learned this in a hard time. I've gone through a lot of testing and trial. I learned the aesthetic joy because I got no other way to live with a sound mind. There was so much pressure that at any time though, I, I might have a nervous breakdown. Now in Bible school, I was taught counseling. I knew I had all those signs already. Have you been so worried, so troubled until you lost your appetite for 20 days? Until when people give you uh, the, the, the expensive food, uh, it's just low things. If it happened around this time, people may think that, oh, you are positive. We are COVID-19 positive, no more. Now those who have gone through that uh, for a while, you whatever you eat, there was no taste. I think God allowed you to know that there can be such painful testing and trial that whatever people offer you is tasteless. Yes. 
I love coffee, but I was tested. I, there were times that I was going through severe testing. Even coffee had no taste. It tastes hungry. Yeah. I love oxtail soup. I don't tell others. I love so many things. But even oxtail soup was ugly things. So life can be tested until you don't feel like it. When God permits that, I want to tell you, He's not purposely punishing you. No, in view of our first point, He got a better one, better blessing, better door, greater ministry, greater outpouring for you. But when this gift was flowing out of me 11 years ago, I didn't expect it. I thought it was for me, for my personal uh, journey with the Lord. That's why the other day I said, you know, for already 11 years, in any church, any meeting, even in, uh, people have never heard about this holy laughter, this joy from heaven. It just flow. There are TVS. May your eyes open to keep this gift. Alright, it's not just a star. It's not just David Paul's star. Uh, when he has gone from here, it's a God to him. No, it's a gift. This is a breakthrough church. Uh, a few individuals here, they're gone through who actually pain in their life. And this gift that come upon them, if you happen to be, have not gone through any extreme painful encounter in your life, but you can easily bring welcome as a gift for your life. Flow away. It's not a matter of choice. It's God has chosen you and given you this gift. It's for you to go and rescue those who are walking through the valley of shadow of death. Amen. So I, I love what these uh, uh, few verses from 1 Peter chapter 4. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, now, if you, uh, if you are doing the things of God, let's say God call you to heal the sick, the more you go and do heal the, to, to heal the sick, the more you do it, please do not think that, you know, there will be no testing and trial. It can be more. I talk with some friends who are in different ministry. We have gone through all the similar journey. Whatever gift you have, you honestly use them. The devil will cause all kinds of trouble. And you fear God? Uh, that's why James chapter 1 put it this way. The devil offer temptation. God cannot give temptation. But God permits it. He looked at it as a testing to promote you. Amen. Why if you fail in a temptation, you don't condemn yourself, you're not losing your salvation, just win another week, another day, another time? What uh, if you're, you're war, not the war, but somehow you fail again? Continue with the same key, come back to the throne of grace. Amen? Come back to the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you are re Approach for the name of Christ, blessed are you. Oh, the first time I read this three word, I felt a bit, uh, uh, how, like God is so sarcastic. No? When I'm going through a terrible problem, testing and trial, walking through a valley of shadow of death, and He said, hey son, blessed are you. Now God is not talking. He is talking about the truth. The devil, uh, has given you the reproach. A son and daughter, I'm giving you blessing. The spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. In your worst time, the spirit of glory is resting upon you. He is in your heart. Yeah. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. <laughs> oh, but this. Uh, scripture, First Peter 4, verse 12 to 14. Mark it on your Bible or your electronic Bible and memorize them. And this is a beautiful verse. Uh, 
Uh, remember First Corinthians 10, 13, in point two, which I've shared, God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Uh, remember that truth so that you can cover all joy when you fall into various trials. Like in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4 says, The testing of your faith will produce patience, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, point, uh, point three of point C, the last last point I want to share for your radical faith for the blood atonement of Christ uncompromised under pressure the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you always remember the covenant of forgiveness when the devil present you the worst thing to divert your faith from Jesus you still look at Jesus the pioneer and the finisher of your faith he is the pioneer of the covenant, blood covenant of forgiveness. Don't just read about the blood covenant. Live with it. Develop a radical view, radical faith on it. That means uh, uncompromised. To be radical means uh, there's no bargaining. So God bless those who patiently endure testing and temptation. After the word they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love Him. Now this afterward doesn't mean that when you reach heaven, it's right there and there. It can be as early as by the afternoon or by next day. Your glory will come. You, you, you will no longer in that, be in that pain, in that shape, but your success, your open door, Yes, this crown of life is a glory. God would want you to remain in shame. Yes, God may allow you to be poor for 10 months, but by the 11th month, you will begin to prosper. Well, God may even allow some, some Christians to go through three years of stagnancy. You have enough to eat, enough to provide, but that is just no great happening. If you are in a doldrum, of no happening uh, for three years, the fourth year, may that be your breakthrough, your crown of life. Amen. Let's stand in the presence of God. Oh, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Let the Lord console you with this scripture that I share. Encouragement from kind other people does help our heart to feel good. But if you learn to open to the deep consolation of the Holy Spirit. Oh, it is far different, far, far different from human encouragement. Consolation of the Lord. Consolation of the Spirit. Yeah, give you faith, give you courage, give you restoration, give you breakthrough. grow old by God that's it is eternally the same loving strong mighty God in the Bible we have seen how God touched the life of some very old people Abraham Moses or some old people not so old like Zechariah and also Samson's parents, they were old. So God can rejuvenate your mind, your soul, and your body. Believe. Believe. Oh, 